Infantry fighting vehicles. Don't confuse them with armored personnel carriers. Those are made for transport too, but their weapons are for self-defense only. Back to the IFVs. They were invented during the Cold War by Germany, and this was the first one ever. Then, basically everyone else made their own one, and until today, they play an important role in combat. But what is their role? Basically, they make infantry more mobile. For example, think of an infantry squad in a combined arms operation. It can't move nearly as fast as the other parts of it by foot, so they need a vehicle. But an AP PC can do the job because it only provides a tiny bit of protection for the soldier. So the IV gives them a lot more firepower and armor, which allows them to disembark on the battlefield. It also complements the tank, taking out dangerous enemy infantry which has anti-tank weapons. With a vehicle like this, you can also flank the enemy, occupied territory compromised by enemy infantry, or you can just draw on it. So now you know the most oversimplified version of the history and the rolling combat. But what about some real IFV examples? Well, that's what today's video is mainly about. Before we start with them, I'd like to say that there are always many versions of the vehicles, so what I say could slightly vary between them. Let's start off with the BMP-1. This stands for Boevaya Maschina Piekote and was accepted into service in 1966 in the Soviet Union. Before this invention, they usually put infantry on top of tanks to transport it. Now we're gonna take a look at the armor. This amphibious infantry fighting vehicle features full NBC protection, which stands for nuclear, biological and chemical. Of course it doesn't protect from a nuclear explosion, but it means that nuclear fallout, biological agents and chemical weapons can't reach the crew. By the way, all the other vehicles I'm gonna talk about after this have got it too. Its steel armor is also effective against shell splinters and small weapons. Let's talk about its armament. The main gun has a diameter of 73mm and it has got a 40 round magazine. There are various PKMs on it too and the infantry in the back can fire their rifles out of it. This IFE also features a guided anti-tank missile on top. Like all the other ones on this list, this vehicle is still being used until today and Russia is trying to upgrade its BMP-1s to modern standards. Oh no, what's happening to the BMP-1? It's evolved. Now we have a BMP-2. This one got accepted into service in 1980 and it fixed the major problems of the BMP-1. The most obvious change is of course the new gun. It is only 30mm in diameter, but the range has improved and it's fully stabilized. It can even engage helicopters. The missile will go change too and the vehicle now has got a smoke launcher. The armor is mostly the same, but the belly got improved and the commander got moved into the turret for better protection. A more powerful engine and better optics make for an even better infantry fighting vehicle. This time it doesn't evolve, I'm sorry. The new BMP-3 was a completely new vehicle and different from the BMP-1 and 2. There are also much much less units of it, about 2000. This IFV was supposed to be a light tank, so its armor is a whole lot better. Not only does it have more steel plates, potential for URA and additional armor kits, but also the self-sealing fuel tank, which is placed directly under the armor for even more protection. Although the armor is very strong, once it's penetrated, the vehicle is likely to explode. Now to the weapons. This IFV has got a 100mm gun, which can fire missiles or normal projectiles, and it can carry a total of 40 rounds. Next to it is a 30mm gun. It's pretty similar to the one of the BMP-2, but it's better. After this, I could talk about the modern follow-up Kurganets, but their production is a bad joke, just like the T-14 Armata. And there's not much info about them online, so we just skip it. Now, let's get some freedom and democracy going on here. This is the, of course, American M2 Bradley. It got accepted into service in 1981, and it kinda looks like Lego in my opinion. Come on, take a look at this armor. Not only does it look like Lego, but it's also made out of steel and aluminium. It protects the crew from small gunfire and artillery shell splinters. The infantry fighting vehicles also got some pretty good weapons. We got the 25mm dual fed gun as well as a coaxial machine gun. Then there is a guided anti-tank missile launcher on top. The Bradley can be transported in the air and it's also fully amphibious. Now I have to admit to you that this Lego armor is only in the M1A3 version of it. That's because it got upgraded a lot over the time and lots of stuff from the original version has been improved. So the M2 Bradley is a good IFV but it doesn't look that great to be honest. It could use some improvement to there. That's where the Swedish combat vehicle 90 or in short CV90 comes in. This vehicle which ended service in 1994 looks cool and also has got some serious armament. This 40mm modified anti-aircraft gun is even a threat to older tanks like the T62. Export versions only have 30 or 35mm guns though. Of course there is a coaxial machine gun and some versions even have grenade launchers. Also its steel armor is impressive because it can be upgraded to withstand 30mm armor piercing rounds. If you don't remember the BMP2 uses them. Anyways this 
this infantry fighting vehicle got improved a lot overall, so there are many versions of it. Also, it was built in a way that it's less visible to radars and infrared sensors. But back to NATO countries. Here we got the Italian Fliegtschirm. This IFE has got a 25mm main gun and two machine guns. Its armor is quite good, considering it has wheels. It withstands 6kg mines, or you can upgrade that to 8kg under any wheel. Also, it's impenetrable to 18.5mm armor-piercing projectiles and 30mm rounds. Overall, pretty good vehicle, but now let's hear from Italy's World War II ally. This IFE may not have the most powerful gun, but its armor level is like the one of the Leopard 1 tank. It's the German Marder. Its armor even got improved in the next versions, removing firing points in the back. Of course, it has got a main gun, a machine gun next to it, and an anti-tank missile launcher. But what's really interesting is this remote-controlled machine gun. This one was only there in the first versions of it, and sadly it got removed in the later ones. Also, this IFE is very effective, because one single unit fought off a Taliban attempt to outflank German positions. But because this vehicle got accepted into service in 1971, it's aging, so Germany needs a replacement. Before we get to the most advanced infantry fighting vehicle of this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments how I could improve my videos in the future. Now, back to the IFVs. No evolution again, but this one is replacing the Marder. It's called Puma and it got accepted into service in 2015. Damn, that was 9 years ago, but still it's a very new IFV. Actually, this one can be used as an anti-air vehicle or even a main battle tank too. It has got a machine gun and a grenade launcher, but the impressive parts are the main weapon. This 30mm gun on the unmanned turret has a range of up to 3 km and the rockets next to it can fly up to 4 km. They can destroy tanks, helicopters and even bunkers. The armor is very impressive too, because it can withstand the most powerful heavy machine gun rounds and even 125mm projectiles in the front. If you go from protection class A to C, you will get the same protection on the flanks and the top will get upgraded to withstand artillery shells. The Puma is going to have active armor too, which can intercept 80 GMs. All of this heavy armor requires a heavy engine, which has even got more horsepower than the one of the Russian T-90A main battle tank. Now, how much does it weigh? The armor class C weighs a whopping 43 tons, which is more than some versions of the T-72. But why is the T-72 so light? After all, it's a main battle tank. Find out in this video right here. Here, and thanks for watching, see you in the next one.